Today I'm going to be going over using an external USB hard drive as a data storage in Proxmox. And while this is not recommended, you can use USB storage in Proxmox like any other drive, or you can pass it through to a different VM, or you can actually use existing file systems and data on it and add Proxmox data to that drive or copy that to another system. I'm going to be going over all the methods and the type of issues and successes I've ran into in this video. Let's first take a look at the simplest way to use USB storage, and that is just like any other disk. USB storage in Linux is just shown as another drive letter that you can use just the same way as any other block device in the system, like an internal SSD or hard drive would be able to be used. I can go into disks in Proxmox here, and I can see my slash dev slash SDC, which is my external 2 terabyte hard drive. I could go white disk and it would delete all the partitions on the drive and make it a fresh drive in Proxmox. I could go to this drive and say initialize of GPT and it'll make a new partition table. And then if I wanted to, I could go to something like ZFS and set it up as a ZFS drive if I really wanted to. And I could call it something like external that's spelled wrong. I can just select my two terabyte drive and make it a single disk one and create. And now I have a ZFS external drive volume. Now let's take a look at adding a USB hard drive to a VM directly. This will give the VM full access to the USB hard drive, but the host won't be able to access it because all it's doing is passing the commands the VM gives to the external hard drive and it doesn't look at any of the partitions itself. So there's two ways to do this in Proxmox. One is a USB device where it essentially the VM makes USB device commands and it sends it straight to the external hard drive. And the other one is via a hard drive pass-through. So where a Proxmox converts the drive signals into USB and then it talks to the drive. Using a USB device gives you the advantage of getting all the USB commands in case there's other settings on the device. So if it's like a RAID enclosure, you could change all the RAID settings and stuff. It was USB but not via the device settings. But for a basic external hard drive, let's just see how USB mode works right now. So I have a basic VM set up, and it currently has nothing passed through to it. I'm going to add a USB device, and I can say USB port, and I'm going to just see my Lacey hard drive, add it, and then when I boot up this system, it's going to have that hard drive attached to the VM via USB, and it'll have full access to it, just like if I had a physical computer with a USB hard drive plugged into it. So now I'm in the VM right now, and if I go open File Explorer and look under this PC, I can see all of my partitions I have right here on the drive. It's a multi-partition drive, so if I look at Disk Management, and I look at it, I can see how I've partitioned my drive with multiple different file systems, and it's all working correctly. If I wanted to, I could right-click on one of these and say, like, Format Volume, and select something else, like EXFAT, or rename it. And it works just like it. And for the simplest demo, I'll just, you know, take a desktop shortcut, copy it there, and now I have an edge shortcut on my hard drive. Actually, I already have a little bit of data on these, so I can look at, like, my Windows ISOs, and they're all there. I can copy them to the desktop in my VM, and it should copy at essentially the full speed, because it's connected via USB 3. So it is copying at about the speed of a laptop hard drive that's inside there. And if we look under Device Manager, I can see this Lassie hard drive USB device, so it's seeing it just as another USB device is. Now let's take a look at using hard disk pass-through to pass through the device to the VM. So Proxmox doesn't really support hard drive pass-through the way they make it easy, but it supports virtual disks, and those virtual disks can be an image file on the system, or it could just be a hard drive device. Because in Linux, the hard drive is essentially a file, so you can just add that file as a virtual disk to the VM, and it works fine. First thing is you have to find out what the actual path of it is. So looking in the web interface, I can see this ST2000 drive. This is my external hard drive right here. It's a bit harder to tell because it is a different name than a Lassie um, branded disk. It's the actual internal disk name. And looking at it here, it says slash dev slash SDC. The problem if you use slash dev slash SDC is those are not guaranteed and can change over time. So the best way to actually get the name would be cd slash dev slash disk slash by id. And for example, I can see my slash dev slash sdc here, and then it has five partitions. And I can also see my ATA ST2000 drive and how it has five partitions. 
and this drive, this device name, it means the exact same thing as SDC, but it's guaranteed not to change during reboots or moving between systems or whatever. But I'm going to be lazy here and use SDC just for this example. So now let's add the device in the command line, which is the only way I've found of how to do this. So I'm going to go to slash, ct, slash etc slash pve slash commu server, and this is where it stores the config files for all of your VMs, which is what tells it what type of devices that VM has. So I'm going to look over here and see it's device number 105. I'm going to run ls. I'm going to see a 105.conf. Let's edit that 105.conf file. And looking at it, it says like hosts, all everything about the system. So at the very end of this, I am going to add another line and call it like SATA1, because I already have a SATA0 device. And then I can just do slash dev slash SDC. Normally they do the device like local ZFS or something, colon, and then a device name, but you can also just put a Linux path in there, save this file. There's no way to refresh, but after a little bit, it should do it. And there you go, hard disk SATA1 slash dev slash SDC. And if I go to boot up this system, it's gonna show that device is passed through to the VM. And then taking a look at my VM, I can see it again with all my partitions. If I right click into disk management, I can see that it shows up as a disk on the system. Looks just like it did via USB. But let's take a look at device manager where we can tell what the disk is. So if we look at disk drives, we can see a Camu hard drive. And that's because the Proxmox system is emulating a virtual hard drive and passing the commands that this VM makes as a hard drive to the system and then puts that over USB. So this is great if you have a file system on the device that the Proxmox host can't read. So for example, a lot of like REFS, Proxmox really doesn't have a way to read. This could also be nice if you wanted an external hard drive to back up to on a specific system, or if you wanted to be able to move this hard drive and copy files to it from a VM and then move it to a physical system. One way I can think about this is it works about the same as if you'd have something like a laptop with a USB hard drive connected to it and has all the same functionality except the device that has the USB hard drive is a VM instead of a physical system. One other thing to take a look at is when you pass through a USB device or a hard drive pass through via the disk method is it shows up as a bootable device in the boot menu. So let's take a look at doing this and see if it works. I put an Ubuntu USB installer disk in this system and I'm going to take a look at this VM. I don't actually have a install ISO connected to it right now, but I can go add USB device, and then I'm going to select my USB port, and I'm going to pass through my PNY USB stick that I've added Ubuntu to, and then if I go under options, and I want to go under boot order, I can see that USB device, activate it, and let's move this up to the top. Hitting OK, starting it up, and let's see if it boots from it successfully. Now I'm gonna push this up a notch and take a look at what if I put a OS drive from a computer into this system and then pass that through. So I've taken a hard drive from a Windows XP test machine that I have, put it in the Proxmox system, and then pass that slash dev slash SDD device through. And let's see if Windows XP is happy to boot. Oh, that's not optimal. Let's say start Windows normally. And it looks like it's trying. I'm guessing it likely is going to run into driver issues here because all the drivers are going to be different. And it looks like Windows XP isn't going to boot. If I had to put a guess, it's because the device driver that it needs for this virtual disk is different than the real device driver it was using in its physical system, and that's the problem. I'm not an expert at fixing this, but also Windows has gotten a whole lot better with these sorts of issues of like Windows 10, as it has more drivers, it appears. But since I have my Ubuntu virtual machine running right now, booted off a USB stick, it looks like it's fully capable of booting via USB. So it's nice to see that you can boot from USB, and it appears that it should be possible to boot via a pass-through disk also. Now let's take a look at working with hard drives that already have data and file systems on there without wiping them. So it's always better to wipe the drive for Proxmox and give Proxmox a file system it likes working with. But sometimes that not, is not possible and you want to keep the file system for some reason and maybe keep the data on the drive. So let's take a look at doing that now. So on this drive, I've passed away external hard drive that I've put three partitions on with what I'd say are relatively common external hard drive file systems. NTFS, EXFAT, and HFS+. 
The issue is all of these file systems are not Linux native and the device drivers that let you use them are kind of the let's let you use external hard drives type drivers and not this should be a boot drive. So let's just try mounting all of these first. So I'm going to mount the NTFS one, so slash dev slash sdc1 in this case, slash mnt slash ntfs is where it's going to go. Looks like it mounted just fine. sdc2 and exfat, that looks like it just worked. And then we'll do um, slash dev slash sd3 and nthfs. Huh, well it just all worked. Let's do df slash h to see if the drives are mounted and how that works. And yeah, they're all mounted. They all show some used space because I copied some test files onto all of these drives. It looks like the space is correct. Now the next thing I'm going to check is if they'll read only or read write. So I'm going to change directory into all of these. So mnt slash ntfs. And then I'm going to touch hello. And read only file system. And it looks like exfat is read write. And then let's go to hfs right now. Next and touch hello and it's also a read-only file system so that's one big thing is a lot of these file systems are going to be read-only by default because yeah the linux drivers just really aren't great well let's try to get around these the default one in proxmox isn't working but with a little bit of configuration ntfs 3g should be able to mount it read write so i'm going to do ntfs um, 3g i used apt install ntfs 3g to install this program um, and then I do slash dev slash sdc1 slash mnt slash ntfs. And let's see if it says unclean wasn't set slash mnt slash ntfs. Touch hello. Hey, it's working now. I can write files to my ntfs drive on Linux. So now I can do read write on Linux and exfat. Next we're going to take a look at is hfs plus. And that requires a non-free driver in Debian now to install it. So by default, you can't install it, so you have to do vim slash etc slash um, apt slash sources.list and then go to your Debian sources and add non-free. And this will allow you to download non-open source software from Debian just as a precaution if that is something you are worried about. I can do apt update and it's going to update the latest packages from all the repositories, specifically the non-free ones. And then if I do apt install hfs progs, it should be available for me and being downloaded. So I've just ran this command of mount-o force and it automatically detected it and used the hfs progs program that I've installed. So now if I switch to the directory and say touch hello, I've just written a file hello. So now I have with a little bit of configuration, ntfs, exfat, and hfs plus all read writable by Linux. But just because I can read and write files in here doesn't mean I should really be using it as a storage for VMs. But let's check if it's possible to use it as storage for VMs, just for fun. So I'm going to go to Proxmox, and then let's go under Data Center, and I'm going to add a storage of the um, directory on each of those. So we're going to call it ntfs, and a slash mnt slash ntfs slash VMs let it use all the different types of storage that it has available and yeah that looks fine we're gonna just say off for pre-allocation and that looks good and i'm gonna do the same with exfat and hfs plus now too and something seems wrong about this but i have an hfs exfat and ntfs partition drives all in proxmox that are working so just for a little bit of fun let's see if i can make it work so I have my Windows hard drive system, which is a basic Windows install right now, and it's running. And let's go transfer its hard drive to some different disks. So I'm going to go and do disk action, move storage to NTFS, and delete the original source and see how this goes. And it looks like data is being copied. And then if we look under the terminal for disk IO utilization, it seems to be copying about 115 megabytes per second, which is the expected speed of the drive. And now let's try a few other different types of storage. So I have a container here right now, and I'm going to move this storage in the container to my NTFS drive now too. Delete the source and see if that works for container images. And it looks like it's complaining about unprivileged, but it seems like it's still continuing to copy data. And I will do one more test on here, which is uploading an ISO image just to make sure the upload functionality works as well. 
It is taking a while to load, but that's because it is a 2.5 inch external hard drive connected via USB, and this is not expected to be super fast, but from the looks of it, it's uploading my USB image, copying my VM and container images, so it appears to be working fine. Well, that actually worked better than I expected. I copied files to my EXFAT, NTFS, and HFS plus partitions without any issues, and let's just take a look at a VM on it. So for example, I have this Win HDD system. It's booted off of my drive off NTFS. Open up the console for it. It's running. I don't know, I can open a program for example. It takes a little bit longer because it's not an SSD, but yeah, there's Edge if you could want that. Don't have any issues. I have like a Linux system right here that has copied onto HFS. Let's just fire it up and find out what system I have on this VM because I didn't label it. Oh, it looks like I have Manjar. So that's working fine. And it's pretty slow because it's a USB hard drive, but it works fine. And the other cool thing is, since I just added it as a directory, all the other test files I copied to this drive still work fine. So if I go to slash um, HFS, I can run ls on it, and I can see that I have like these test directories of files I copied to it. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this. Likely NTFS and HFS Plus and EXFAT are going to have a lot more issues than another file system. But I could still see this being useful. Since you can copy files without deleting them or store backups on an external hard drive. Or maybe you just are limited on drives and you want to add VMs to an external drive without deleting data. Now one other thing is if you want to copy data from this hard drive directly into the VMs, that can get a little bit ugly, but the best way I do it is set up like a Samba server on the host. Just install Samba, then edit the Samba config file. Have the VM mount that share, and then copy files over that internal network, and then delete them from here, and now expand your virtual machine disk. And now you have a virtual machine disk on the system, still running EXFAT, but your data that was on the hard drive is now in the Proxmox VM image or container image. Still pretty ugly in my opinion, and you probably shouldn't do it, but it does work if you wanted to do something like that. Now, the other thing is converting it from EXFAT, NTFS, or HFS Plus into a Proxmox native file system. And it is possible if you want to do it the extremely ugly way of shrink the file system Add something like ZFS or BTRFS or EX on T4, copy as much data as you can, and then shrink it a bit more, move the partition, expand your new partition like EXT4, and keep doing that. I've done that, it works, it's really ugly, but it would let you convert a, f tape, a drive with data on it, you have to have a little bit of free space, and convert it to a Proxmox drive file system without needing any external storage. Thanks for watching this little video on going over external USB storage in Proxmox. I will continue to note that you probably should not do this. And even though it does work, I would normally stay away from USB storage if possible as it's traditionally not super reliable and can easily be unplugged by someone else. If you want reliable storage, an internal drive is the way to go. But it is really cool that Proxmox lets you do all this stuff that you probably don't want to do a lot of the time and it kind of just works in Proxmox.